Yes, uh, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I'm a petroleum economist and a university lecturer where I teach uh, petroleum economics. And we have read, uh, we have seen in other countries as well, where resource abundance has led to so much instability, social, economic, and uh, political negative outcomes in countries that have so much of natural resources. So the Niger Delta crisis and instability in the region is not surprising. It's not something new in countries that have abundance of natural resources, especially of petroleum resources. And uh, one of the effects of having so much uh, money flowing as a result of having abundance of natural resources is the complaints and grievances. Because of so much inflow of revenue, and there's so much pressure and so much expectation, especially from the populace, expecting so much benefit. And any failure to see physical or immediate benefit will lead to grievances and complaint. And Niger Delta have been suffering from a lot of deficiencies and uh, lack of development over the years. And we've seen so much money being allocated to the region, uh, ranging from the 13% derivation funds. The funds have been uh, allocated to the Niger Delta uh, Development Commission uh, with, and the, with the recent creation of the Niger Delta Ministry. And, so, and this is in addition to the usual allocation to the states, which has been uh, always the, the largest share going to these states. But we have not seen development. We have not seen roads. We have not been, we have not been seeing schools, hospitals. And the quality of education is still low in, the, in that places. We have seen so many fraudulent uh, projects being said that to have been put in place, but those projects were not there. And these people feel and think that they should get more from the natural resources beneath their land. And this is it's not, it's not there. And this has been taking place for so long. So now they are acting. I think, I believe during the President Eradua, he tried to sit down with them and even give them some incentives through the amnesty program. But this has not been sustainable in that way. And now we are seeing a new administration and with a new trend, a reemergence of new militant group called the Avengers. And now we have to ask, what are they avenging? And to me, like I always say, like I mentioned yesterday in my speech, I said the, the current administration must take responsibility of what's going on right now in the Niger Delta. Yeah, well, For example... Why the current administration? Yeah, because we've said that there was relative stability during the last administration. Even from Eradua's regime, there was relative stability. We were able to maintain even 2.5 million barrels of oil production in the region uh, in the last four years. But now we have seen drastic reduction in the oil production to 1.4 million, which, which, which amount uh, barrels a day, which amounts to $40 million loss daily from our national revenue. And this affects so many other sectors of the economy. And the reason why I say this current administration must take responsibility is because of its approach to handling issues. For example, Mr. Tampolo was given a contract to protect the oil and gas facilities in the region by the last administration. And now the current administration came and started chasing this man, saying that this contract was over exaggerated and he has diverted the government money without the need to call on the, 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 the previous government officials who gave him the contract. And I believe from his submission, he said that he was given this contract legitimately. And if government question the legit le legitimacy of this contract, what they need to do is to call the government officials that gave him that contract. But what they did was they freeze his bank account, and he went to court, asking the court to, to ask the federal government to defreeze his bank account. But the government didn't respond to that. The next thing the government did was to send army to bring him to court, charging him for offense that he think he didn't commit which is diverting government funds. And he thinks that the money he was given, he has used it judiciously to protect the oil facility. And that's why we are able to maintain the stable oil production at that time when he was given the contract. And now immediately, few weeks thereafter, we see reemergence of militancy, gas pipelines, vandalism, and so many other destruction. 
and it means that this guy must have followers that have arms and they can even go beyond killing people and they can even uh, destroy these facilities so i think to me there is correlation between the issue of tompolo and the current uh, for, uh, 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 instability in the region because these guys they might be they may have sympathy for him because these guys they think that their president has lost the election and now they have been chased trying to get something which is legitimate that is given to them and so you are now hurting them twice so i think to me what the government should have done was to revisit the contract that was given to him if there are areas of exaggeration then we can review these contract terms and still give him the chance but now you can say okay we want you to work with the nigerian army to protect our facility and and then those guys i think their their region is not developed what they need to do is to ask their leaders what have they done with the money that was given to them how much money this for example aqua Ibon state received in one year or two years what have they done with it and that's the kind of militancy you want to see. Militancy in promoting good governance, transparency, and accountability. And if there's any grievance or complaint, we are in a democratic era. What the people are supposed to do is to come out and protest. And if it means to come over to Abuja, sit down for a month to demonstrate, and the international community will see. There are even other people from other parts of the country that will even join them in the protest. And the government must come down and listen to them and so that we can sit down at the table to see what are their yearnings and who are people responsible not just to start destructing facilities because this will not ogre well well mm -hmm. let's get from comrade uh, aria what, what's your position on, on the, uh, the extreme situation measures taken by the uh, nda and the hope for peace so oh, thank you very much uh, that with me. Well, somehow I agree that uh, we need to look at the system of government and uh, how the revenue or income flows either from the center to the state or from the state to the center. Uh, right now, like you mentioned, the oil dependence has made the, the entire economy reliant on the on single sector, which is the petroleum uh, sector. And this has made so many states lazy and uh, so much dependent on the oil revenue. And I believe my state, Kasno State, um, they are now struggling to pay uh, uh, salaries of the government workers. And this is just because of this recent instability in the Niger Delta region. And that tells you if the oil in the Niger Delta finish today, it means that people like me will lose our jobs because our state government cannot raise the money to pay for its liability and to wake them up i think there is need for very decisive action uh, to restructure the system of government and this may not take place just immediately uh, there could be a 10-year plan toward achieving that i know i know that we have so much potentials across the country it's not only oil we have we will and, take a break uh, okay. right now to bring the news when we come back we'll also conclude your thoughts and take more all right thank from you other people outside. Mm -hmm. still 95